Hello everyone, welcome to week three. I'm really excited to start talking to you about this week about the readings and go over last week's readings. Make sure to take a minute and look at the feedback that I've given you on the topic you selected for your wiki. And with this introduction too, try to write it as if you are actually introducing the wiki. One of the things I saw, and this one might have been my fault for not clarifying it, I've also included here uh, the topics that everyone is working on. And if you have questions about what the wiki should look like, you can look to the examples that I've posted on Blackboard. The next big assignment related to the wikis is on June 3rd, when I want to see a, an outline for the three sections that you're going to have. Um, this won't be a, a rough draft of each section. Um, I just want to see though how you're going to sketch out, how you're going to cover each of those topics. Let's talk about the quiz a little bit. There were two questions it seemed like through people. Um, the first one here was from the Gilmore reading. One of the big points that Gilmore F emphasized is that journalism has always been personal. But the main reason why the shift from personal journalism to corporate journalism occurred is really the financial realities of owning a press and publishing in a community that would only support one newspaper. The point I wanted to make is that corporatization is what's forced personalism out of journalism, not journalism itself or not the objective idea. Uh, in fact, the objective ideal came apart as a financial decision um, rather than as a necessarily a practice of good journalism. The second question that seemed that you guys seemed to have a little bit of trouble with um, came from the Shirky reading, specifically where he was talking about Linux. And the key that Shirky talks about and I wanted to emphasize in this question is that Linus Torvalds set a clear direction for what was going to happen there. He didn't take everybody's comments. He didn't use everything everybody got him. He said, I'm going to be in charge of this project, but I'm going to be open to everything that you guys submit to me. I think it also kind of serves as a good starting point for our discussion about this topic of where do journalists find themselves in this new reality? You know, in a reality where everyone can be a reporter. Um, everyone is posting information. Well, let's look at it from a point of view of an example again. WikiLeaks, you know, was the site started by Julian Assange where he would host secret government documents that were given to him and that anyone could access and read. And sometimes his motives for why he was doing this may not have been the most pure. Glenn Greenwald, on the other hand, the journalist who worked for The Guardian at the time that did a lot of work with Assange, typifies the role that journalism plays in this new digital information economy. Greenwald and other journalists spent a ton of time both working with Assange, um, working with government leaders, working with other media to make sure that the information that they included from the WikiLeaks memos um, was accurate. And that's a good example for where we're kind of heading. Um, and that really answers the question that I ask here of why does his involvement matter? Is it enough that Assange just released all these documents? Or would any of us know about it if it hadn't been for Greenwald and other journalists who worked tirelessly to vet and make that information accessible to us. And I think that's the role that all of our readings talk about this week. That not only is our audience more involved, but we are more needed than ever to make sense of the information that they're sharing. But let's look at some of your quotes before we get into that. The kind of key theme of this week's readings was the idea of the audience, or as Gilmore calls them, um, the people formerly known as the audience. They're involved more than ever. And one of you had a really keen insight into what this involvement from the audience really means. On one hand, audience participation is a good thing, as collective intelligence can help journalists become more informed about a certain subject than they would be able to on their own. On the other, it's an intimidating thing, as every possible minutia in a story can be double and triple checked for validity by an entire online community, which means journalists must always be on their toes. I would add to that that journalists need to be on their toes of seeing what other people are doing and incorporating that into their reporting. It's not enough for the journalist to be out there and finding the sources himself. The journalist has to be tapped into the communities that are sharing this information. That highlights something that I think several of you misunderstood by reading your thought papers on the discussion board. How did Jenkins really define what convergence is? The key to what, how Jenkins really defines convergence is that the audience is defining it and the audience is actually taking the opportunity to create convergence rather than us doing it. So what does this really mean for how journalism is going to be practiced when the audience is so involved? I envision an age where reporters won't break as much of the freeway crash News at 11 stories and more of the documents show pattern of public corruption stories and this ties directly into the flourishing culture Jenkins calls convergence. 
Again, the key there is convergence is a culture. It's not just a practice. Another one of you summarized it really well. The advent of online news via the internet has introduced two major factors to the relationship between a journalist and their audience. One, this idea of niche journalism, and two, the idea of community participation. This author goes on to connect those two things um, and talk about a reciprocal relationship between them. Together, these two components of increased audience awareness work as a loop. A journalist publishes a story, as always, with a specific audience in mind. The public now has the ability and often the inclination to respond to the story with feedback, additional information, memes even. From there, the journalist gets a sense of what the kind of people that might read a story like the last one he wrote would like to hear more of. This emphasizes to me, too, why we need to be so connected with our audiences. We have to do more to involve them, both in the process and in the discussion afterward. We have to think that our stories aren't complete when we finish writing them. This is the, at the core of what Shirky calls the publish then filter concept, which I think some of you kind of misunderstood as well. Publish means we do our best effort first and put a good story out there, but we keep our ears to the ground of what other things other people are saying, and then we filter that all back into the story that we're doing. Filtering content has always been the job of paid journalists, and in this convergence culture, there is also a flip side. Reporters can reach out to on-the-ground sources who would otherwise be untraceable without social media and the internet. This allows all journalists to seek more human voices in a story as opposed to the official stance. Involving more people is always a good thing. And not just involving them in the story as sources, but involving them in the story so that they can do something about it. And we can actually build community. There's a couple of really big questions that you guys asked in applying these ideas to the practice of journalism. We know that everything is digital, and that's great, but I am still wondering how news organizations will find the balance between digital and quick with polished and good reporting. That is really a challenge, but I think we are up to it. What we need to do is move away from the idea that we have to provide all the information. The other big question, then, is how do we tap into the cognitive surplus that Shirky talks about? The Internet has allowed a mass pool of intelligence that is capable of transmitting information in the blink of an eye. Consumers are more aware and knowledgeable than ever. Independent journalists and large companies alike must embrace and collaborate with consumers under these circumstances. Underline those two words, embrace and collaborate. I thought that was a really keen insight. Well, that's really about all I have to share about last week. Let me give you a quick preview for your readings for this week. This is Wired City by Dan Kennedy. He's a former reporter and faculty member who was able to spend a year researching the New Haven Independent. And I think he came up with some keen insights about how news organizations are adapting in the online world. Public Parts by Jeff Jarvis takes it kind of a step further and talks about how important the public is to all that we do. Jarvis himself is a former journalist. He's actually the founding editor of Entertainment Weekly magazine. And the final reading, I don't have a copy of this because I loaned it to someone else. This is a chapter that I wrote with George Daniels, professor at the University of Georgia, where we tried to answer the question of where is community formed? Is community journalism just about the hyper-local newspaper or website you know, that covers a small area? Or is it about more than that? I asked kind of an interesting question on the quiz where I try to tease out the nuance of those meanings there. It was our observation through synthesizing other research and our own experiences that community journalism is more than geography. It's about what happens when journalists apply their skills and their training and really bring people together for a greater cause. That's all I have for this week then. Remember for this week, the quiz is available until Thursday afternoon because we got kind of a late start this week because of the holiday. We can give another day to the discussion board too, so you'll have until Thursday evening to post your original comment, and then Friday, Saturday, and Sunday to post your responses to other people's comments. As always, if you have questions, just drop me an email. I look forward to reading your papers and looking at the discussion.